well, we go trackside. We don't take it on the road very often, but when we do, we do it our way. We get the hot guests, and we get the hot topics, and we ask them all the tough questions. Tracy, Kanan, Pappas, and Blondell. Today, OTR from the Toronto Molson Indy. with Michael Landsberg, brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. <laughs> what an outstanding day, the forecast for the weekend. Outstanding as well as OTR is trackside at the 1999 Toronto Molson Indy. First off, a thanks to the great folks at the Toronto Molson Indy and these sponsors for delivering these outstanding guests. So the thanks are done the rest of the way. I'll give you guys the business. We don't job for nobody. Great to welcome to the show four outstanding drivers as they get set for the Toronto Molson Indy this weekend. He is the pride of Scarborough, Ontario, one of the best-known Canadian athletes. He's having an awesome year. Great to welcome Paul Tracy to the show. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Great to welcome back to the show. This is number three for Mark Lundell. He's had a little rough luck, got a sore neck, but he'll be back next month former winner here at the Toronto Molson Indy, Mark Lundell. Hey, Mark. Good to be here as well. And great to welcome for the first time, 1998 Cart Rookie of the Year. He's having a fine year as well, Tony Kanan. Hi, Tony. Thank you. And Max Pappas, talk about consistency. I think four top five finishes this year. Max Pappas, member of Team Ray Hall, handpicked by Bobby Ray Hall to replace him, of course, Bobby Ray Hall, one of the best known guests here, and we'll talk to him tomorrow on the show. Guys, the way the show works is this. I throw out a topic, then we go at it. I want to bring up to you some NASCAR news. It was Tony Stewart, 298 laps. After that much, he's leading. It's a 300-lap race. Runs out of gas. He is really pissed. He's not a happy man, right? Gets off the track, gets on the plane, doesn't talk to the media. Later on, when he was questioned why he would not deliver the news to the media, he said, it's because I'm such a competitor. Is that an excuse for leaving without talking to the media? Sounds like a bit of a crybaby to me. Yeah. <laughs> my opinion. I've been, I've I been think, you know, the same things that Mark race. say usually. No, isn't it? I'm isn't sorry? It the same excuse you use all the time when you send people So let me just put to two help? things together. You're saying Mark's a crybaby, right? No, but I, I, I understand Mark's point, I would say. Uh, you know, we, you ran out of fuel, 20 laps to go. You still have to, you know, to talk to the people, but sometimes you're so upset that you can't say what you really want to say, so you better leave. Okay, but I mean, you're talking about NASCAR. You know, let's talk about fast things, <laughs> not slow stuff. Uh, I mean, the bottom line is that, uh, you know, we're all professionals, and the media need to get the, their answers. Everybody uh, out there needs to know what actually went wrong. The fans, everybody watching TV, what was the bottom line? He should have at least given an answer. I mean, yeah, we're all competitors, but uh, he's professional, he's a race car driver, he's got people to speak to, and he needs to do it. That's like you do all line. the time. I mean, you've got to talk and represent your sponsors and you know I could see from a sponsor's point of view that was a prime opportunity for them to get their product viewed on TV for 30 or 40 seconds and he blew it off and wouldn't speak to anybody and and he's now gotten himself into a bit of a situation where he's now being portrayed as maybe difficult to deal with and you know regardless of what happens all of us have had accidents we've made mistakes we have people run into us and you get out of the car and you're as mad as hell but you've got to go and and represent your sponsor and give them an opportunity give yourself an opportunity to explain what happened and represent your sponsors okay so you say it's important to represent your sponsors and give them their money's worth because like you say this is 34 seconds 30 40 seconds a really valuable airtime because everybody's going to watch how about responsibility to the fans guy pays to sit up in the stands behind you guys watching at home he's the guy that ultimately or the woman that pays your salary somewhere down the line do they have the right to say to you, Paul Tracy, or you, Mark Wondell, or Max, or Tony, I want to know what happened. I want to know the inside scoop of what was going on in the track and the race. Do they have the right to say that? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think at the end, you know, like, if you make a mistake or if something happened, you know, first explanation out on TV is going to be enough for everybody, and it's going to be fulfilling all the, all the questions of everyone. For sure, you know, like, people... Everyone has 10,000 10, different questions, isn't it? That's true. I mean, sometimes it's obvious what happened. I mean, I was leading in Long Beach, went off and crashed. So why ask me what happened? Can you see it? I mean, I'm well, not going to make up uh, Rear brakes, weren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had a problem with a pad, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, it was a rat in the car, <laughs> isn't it? So, Tony, you're saying it's a stupid question then in the media? No, no, if, no, 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 no. If you crash and I go, what happened? Well, no, because some people, you know, sometimes... <laughs> reverse yeah. gear, reverse gear. <laughs> so, sometimes you have a problem, but sometimes, I mean, it's obvious you're cornering and you just miss it. The guy wouldn't say, hey, 
He wants to know what happened because some people don't understand too much about racing and you have to say, okay, I ran off track and, uh, you know, if you don't run in the line, it's bloody and then you, I crashed. But, and then the guy asks you, are you upset? I mean, no, <laughs> no I'm at very all. happy. You know, I'm going back home and... I want to play a clip for you. You guys won't be able to hear it, but it's Dale Jarrett and Jeff Gordon. And they had a little bump, I saw a that. little bit of nudge. You guys have probably all seen it. I want to get a comment from you. Of course, uh, this happened on Sunday. Jarrett was nudged by Gordon at the Jiffy Lube 300. There's the nudge happening right here, and here was the result of the nudge. We can't. We can't. We can't. Jeff caught me and hit me once down in one and two, and I blocked him down the back stretch, and then he ran in the back of me, not once, but three times in turn three and four. And uh, it'll be reversed one day. So you have just given me a whole new perspective on this. Two guys arguing. I'm oh, sorry, you want, you want to say something? No, they, they show, they show. I mean, I'm not a, I'm against today or to Jared or to, or I'm in favor of Gordon, but if you show the, 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 the straight before, Jared put Gordon in the grass, and then Gordon bumped Jared. So I don't think, I mean, it's a fight, and they can bump each other. We can do that here, but they can do it. So forget it. It's just racing. You do it You do it again the next time with the guy. I mean, there is no point to jump. It's The race is done. The guy won the race. Why do you have to argue? You know, just go for it and try to get him the next time. I don't think, I don't think it's a bad situation. I mean, the, seeing those two arguing, I think you show more of the human side of the sport, tempers, people get upset, and I, yeah. I think it's okay to show that once in a while. Too many people, you know, they disappear into a trailer. <laughs> really? <laughs> and then they come out with a prepared statement like you're reading from a notebook, you know, and I think that's boring. No, yeah, I agree. Sometimes showing personality is the right thing, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is motor racing, you know, I think it's the only sport where you can really have comments of the people, like, you know, uh, think about it, you know, Go to Michael Jordan when uh, he missed a shot and ask him, oh, why did you miss him? You know, he's going to kick you in the ass. You know? yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. I mean, it's the characters. And I mean, as these guys said, there's not many sports in the world where you get a microphone stuffed in your face like two minutes before you're about to do two hours of racing. You know, and as soon or as you get out of a race... seconds after you get out of exactly, a Exactly, as soon as you get out of a race car. And you've got to be on your job. You've got to know what to say. But that stuff, yeah, it happens. And it happens with us as well. All of us guys have probably had a run-in. I know me and Tony have had a run-in mm -hmm. at some point. Me and Paul, we, me and yeah, Paul we had it a run-in. it happens, you know. And we can all sit here together now and talk about it, and we can laugh about it. But at the time, yeah, you're going to get into it. I think the fan wants to ask this question. How do you laugh about it? I mean, on a basketball court, a couple of guys nudge, and, you know, a guy sits a bad pick. That's a different story. Here, you know, it's life or death. So when a guy well, makes a mistake around you, it could cost we, you your life. How do you laugh Like about what, what happened between me and Mark, and uh, I was, I'm still young, but I was, you know, I got upset with him for something that he probably didn't saw me, and then I, do, I did something wrong. And fortunately, everybody went out, nothing happened. We had just sit down and discuss, and, and right now we're laughing about it. So we sometimes have to think twice because we're talking about split of second can cost your life. I think there is always respect, isn't it? Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, you, you can get really, really upset, but uh, you never do something to another driver that you wouldn't like it to happen to you. So, you know, there is... Unless you're Montoya. You know, <laughs> yeah, but he did the only once, you know, I think he learned well. well. once is maybe once too much. So oh, there you go. That's right. Toronto Molson India is where we are, and what these drivers, three of them at least, uh, will be trying to do is what Paul Tracy did back in 1993. Back with more OTR in a moment. Beautiful day in the city of Toronto. Beautiful day to talk some, some, some golf. I want to talk to you guys, not about golf, not about your swing, because I understand at least one of you has an outstanding swing. I want to talk to the four of you about competing for your country. The Ryder Cup is the most prestigious, most important international competition in golf. You guys have no equivalent in your sport to that. I want to read a quote from Mark O'Meara. He says, lots of money is being made, none of it goes to the players. He says it's time to start paying the players in events when everybody else seems to be getting rich. Is it too much to expect of a guy to compete for his country and make no money? Uh, I think you should compete for your country because it's a great honor, but at the same point, if it's being commercialized, if it's a commercial venture, then the guy who's involved in it needs to be getting some reciprocation. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, us, we're all in sport. 
we've only got a short career span and unfortunately you know some of it may be shorter than others and you need to make hay while the sun shines and uh, even though it's your country yeah your country needs to still pay you i agree with mark you know i mean like us we are in the eight brazilians in the field so i mean if we're gonna ask money for our country for eight guys and we're talking about a tons of money here well, i don't know what's gonna happen but for sure like mark says if you, you know you're competing for your country and people do something with your name and with you we should be paid if it, it's a different thing you know if money goes to charity or things like that you know i would agree that uh, none of the guys should make money but uh, if money don't only go to charity you know if they don't go to help young kids or things like that you know i think it's a bit unfair do you guys compete for your country at all? I mean, yeah. big time. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We, 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 still, we have a World Cup series within right. the sport. Right. And, uh, we're all, leading, sorry. Yeah, we're Brazil still leading because there's eight The Brazilians. Nations Cup you're talking <laughs> the about. The Nations I'm Cup. Okay, yeah. it's just the five of us talking. Do the drivers really give a damn about the Nations Cup? Of course. Yeah, yeah. of course. I mean, oh, uh, yeah. you know. I don't care. I mean, of course, I mean, w what's the only way to make more points for your country? It's winning the race. So everybody wants to win here. Oh. You win the race you accumulate points for your country too the problem is you know, they're there. eight uh, you know it's that typical brazilian you know they're leading eight people i'm the only one <laughs> no that's not I'm my problem <laughs> yeah, yeah italian italian song here <laughs> yeah that's not my problem you're british juan pablo is the only guy i'm the only british guy dario scottish yeah that's on right the border on the border zanardi won by himself last year or well no. you help him a little bit so i uh, you know jacques villeneuve uh one of the best known Canadians gets voted Canadian Athlete of the Year. And a lot of Canadians, myself included, wondered, should this guy even be a candidate for Canadian Athlete of the Year? I mean, is he still a Canadian athlete? What makes him Canadian? What makes a guy like Jacques Villeneuve Canadian? Because he shows up once a year and well, holds a big news conference in Montreal? I don't know. Help me out. Well, I mean, you've got to question that a little bit. I mean, he's, his family name is very, very, very big here. And, you know, he was born here and lived here as a child, but has moved to Europe when he was very young, you know. Me, I, I've lived here my whole life up until a couple of years ago and grown up 10 miles from here. So, you know, it's, I, I don't know where you draw the line on that, you know. I think, you know, the sport brings you around in the world, isn't it? And it's not really your fault, you know. I mean, you know, I'm very proud I'm Italian, you know, but I, I am really, you know, very proud of wearing my flag and, uh, you, know, you know, keeping up my the name of my country. but. You know, I had to come over in the United States, you know, to, to be able to race. So it's uh, circumstances that bring you around. You know, it's not uh, Jacques fault he is racing in Formula 1, is it? You know, I think Villeneuve, he doesn't live in Canada because he can't live in Canada. The obvious one is because of tax. You know, the second one is because of circumstances of traveling. But at the end of the day, all around the world, he represents Canada. Everybody knows he's a Canadian. So what's the problem with that? He's Canadian Athlete of the Year. I think he deserves it. And he is an athlete. You know, don't tell me anything else that none of the race car drivers are not athletes, because that's BS. Well, I guess I won't even consider doing that. Because you've just said the definitive word. Yeah. So email, you know email, write in, whatever you want to do. Phone now. We'll make a stand. Yeah. <laughs> I loved you last time. I didn't like you much the first time. No, just kidding. Uh, we'll take a break. And you pointed out that this guy won in 1997. Indeed, that was a story. 1997, Toronto Molson Indian. Why Mashusta as driving for Pac West. <laughs> it's one of the most amazing places in the world as a sporting live event. Right uh, live to tape. Oh, okay. uh, it's, it's quite amazing that this whole site doesn't exist as a car race. And then one week later, bang, the whole thing gets taken over as it builds for Sunday's race to the Toronto Molson Indy. Thanks to the four of you for joining us, but you're not done yet. I want to ask you guys, because I, I feel like I, I speak for the fans sometimes, and uh, all the time, I guess, in theory, although technically we don't do it like that all the time. I want to ask you about the danger, and I want to ask you about this. Is there any point where a driver should say, this car is too fast to be safe, or is it your responsibility to take whatever car you get and go out there and make the most of it? I think you just said it. 
it's your responsibility to make the best of what you've got. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you're having second thoughts about not going quick enough or you don't want to go that fast, then uh, you better hang up the helmet yeah, and give the gloves to somebody if you, else. If you're having second thoughts that at this level, the competition is so high that you're not going to stay around very long. Because you look at guys, if you're not running at the front consistently, or at least showing that you have the potential to run at the front, then you're going to get sent down the road. I mean, this sport is a lot different than, than ball and stick sports like NFL and uh, the NBA, the NHL, where you've got the potential of 600, 700 players in a league. A lot of opportunity to stay in the league. You've got 27 drivers, 26 to 28 drivers in the series. And there's hundreds of guys around the world they want wishing to, to get in place. here. Stand in the line. Every time you, a guy like I have an accident or Mark has an accident, there's a hundred drivers call up his owner and say, hey, I want to drive the car. Is he, when's he going to be back in the car? You know, so, so it, it, at this level, if you're not, if your commitment level is not there, you're, de you're done, you know? Yeah, but, the but owner, if your commitment level is there so much, you could be done as well, but done for a totally other reason. Because no. well, but, uh, you're I never stupid, you know, like, uh, you know, not only, you know, when you reach a level, like a uh, like champ car, like Formula One, you know, you are one of the 28 drivers for a reason. And, uh, you know, definitely, you know, you need to push very hard, work uh, very hard in, like, you know, not having any second so thought. But uh, be behind the scene, you know, there are a lot of people working very hard for the safety of the driver, safety of the tracks. And uh, I personally rely on those people to make the best out of my safety. And you know when you're being stupid and when you're not, when you're driving like crazy and taking a lot of risk, you have to drive in the limit all the time. <laughs> but, but there is a there is a line that you sometimes you're lucky some people drive like that all the time and nothing happened and some people you know someday you know unfortunately like you know i don't think mark was testing and thinking the car broke and he crashed at 170 miles an hour he wasn't acting like a, a crazy man he was doing his job and doing his, his testing so the danger is there but we can't think about it i think Technically, our cars are probably the safest cars in the world. Though. Oh, yeah. If you watch the, the Formula that 1 accident, done, what happened with Schumacher? What happened to Schumacher? Well, our car, we, we were standing a lot better. I mean, look, Mark's crashed. And then... Well, look at Patrick's crash last week. Yeah. Yeah. If that was a Formula 1 car, it would all be over. For shredded the wheat, believe oh, yeah. me. Yeah. And look at, you know, like the first lap, you know, when the car went over my road hoop. Yeah. I, I feel that, uh, that you know, uh, champ cars are, are way, way safe. And... Uh, it's actually, you know, way safer driving our car than driving any street car, road car. Well, your car has to be safer. Obviously, demands are enormously greater. So, you know, to say that the cockpit you're in is incredibly safe, uh, it better damn well be incredibly safe because of the stakes that you're playing for and the speed that you go at. Uh, guy, you mentioned Patrick Carpentier and his spectacular crash. Um, help me understand how Patrick Carpentier or Mark Lundell or Michael Schumacher gets back in the car after an accident like that. He can do it better than anybody. Yes, that's, I mean, it's a good question. The situation really with that, I mean, for me, uh, there's the issue of having mechanical failure, first of all. One, I don't like it because of mechanical failure and it gives me broken bones. Uh, secondly, though, it wasn't a driver error, so, you know, in that case, it's kind of harder in some respects to accept. If it was a driver error, I could accept it a little bit easy because I know I made a mistake. I've been out now for eight weeks and uh, there's not a day goes by that I think about when I'm going to get back in the car. But the problem is if I start thinking that when don't I get in the car is the case of let's, let's just finish it, let's give up. I need to have the commitment. I've still got it. But it's a difficult question. You're going to ask yourself many times. The, the one time you say to yourself, nope, that's it, that's going to be the only time because then you're unsafe to yourself you're unsafe to all the other 25 guys around I think, you i think there's always always nervous tension when you get in a race car that's natural. A, yeah i think it's very natural but that always a every sport's got to be the same you know or actor or pop yeah. star or anything that, that buzz is what makes yeah. you tick that's what makes you want to do it i tell you know what happened to me on sunday last sunday you know like on the first turn you know like i uh, was collected by a guy you know a guy flew over my head hit my helmet you know the beginning you know for the first uh, couple of minutes I say you know I think we've been pretty lucky here but uh, after two minutes what I was doing I dust myself off and I was running back to the T-car and uh, just wanted to go back and uh, you know try to do our best and actually when we finish fifth it was I pretty think good. it's a matter how much you really want to do this because Mark could be here and said okay you know I had a big one 
I have my wife, my son, my both sons at home. Why I have to do that? And I think at this time, that's when is the time to stop. He, when he still wants to do it. We have a choice, all of us. Yeah, I mean, we have a great job and we love it and we respect it, but we will have a choice. We don't have to go out on Sunday afternoon and do it if we don't want it. But we all do because we want to go and do it. Do you ever resent the fan that sits in the stands that's looking for a crash? Because you know they're there and you know they're that they are. That, yeah. Well, don't you resent a... that? Doesn't that bug the hell out of you, given the fact that, hey, it's your life. This is, I mean, it, this is not just moments of entertaining. You're well, providing it's them with. Two ways, you know. That's part put, of the, put part myself of the as a fan. If I see, if I was watching the race, I was like, oh, cool. The guy took three wheels off and put the guy driving my car. He would be upset as well. So, I mean, you know, I, everybody here crashed in the races and you jump out of the car and people are like, ah. As long as he's safe. As long as you're safe and, uh, you know, people, you jump out of the car and people applauding you because you did a good job, but you crashed and you have to accept That's like that. boxing. You can't say that you don't sit there and don't want to see the guy get the crap knocked out of it. Yeah. I mean, I do. So you yeah. guys handle the fans' desire for a crash saying, yeah. hey, if I was in the stands, yeah. I want exactly the same thing. It, as long as the guy is safe, he's not in the ambulance and people are like, right. yeah! Yeah. Okay, we got to take a break. As we go to break, we always invite our viewers to contribute to the show. Let us know what they think about the topics, about the guests. Four guests today, outstanding, i got to say. This uh, We're talking about the Hall of Fame of Lawrence Taylor. Should he be in? Should he be out? Given the fact that he was buying some cocaine as he was going in, Lawrence Taylor should be included in the Hall of Fame. Judge him and others by what they do on field and on the field only. Let us know what you think of the show and the topics and what guests you want to see. There's our website, our email, facts. Back to the Toronto Molson Indy in a moment. And don't forget from the Toronto Molson Indy, Bobby Rahal, who started it all, winning number one. I hope it's just as good as this one. Guys, it's been a lot of fun uh, meeting you guys and seeing the personalities, which I think your sport does as well as any, which is allowing the fan really a chance to reach out and touch you guys. I was talking about Lawrence Taylor. I know it sparked some interest in the break. The guy gets caught buying some cocaine, and then they vote him into the Hall of Fame. Does he belong in the Hall of Fame, given his off-field problems? Well, I think... He's had a great, I probably know more about football than these guys. He's had a great career on the field, but he's run into trouble lately off the field. And I, it's hard to draw the line, but he's a huge, huge celebrity. And when you are of that stature in sports, you've got to assume, you know, you've got to take responsibility for your actions. And if, you know, if you want to do stuff behind closed doors and it doesn't involve anybody else, but as soon as you get involved and you get arrested and there's charges and there's you know it involves a lot of other people other than just yourself and, and i think that's it's difficult to uh to decide so is that a thumb up or not would you put a tick i just got a few seconds left would you vote him in no okay guys uh we got to say thank you so much for joining us uh we should thank the toronto molson indy your various teams and we should say there are a handful of tickets still available for this amazing weekend the weather looks good the track looks great. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow from the Toronto Molson Indy. Thanks so much, guys, for joining us. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg right. is brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. He was one of the best players ever, too. Yeah.